Hello everyone and welcome to our next video. So in the previous video we finished writing the tests for our email validation as well as the functionality to make that email validation pass. So what I want to do now with you is just a little bit of cleanup of course. Um, our code is not formatted. I ran prettier here and as you can see there are many um, many files that need to be fixed, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll just quickly create a couple of configuration files, meaning eslint ignore, right? That's the um, first and the second one is dot prettier ignore. And these two files are going to make sure that I am not including unnecessary checks within my ESLint and my Prettier configuration. So if you want to have a look at ignoring code in Prettier, then as you can see, it's just suggesting us to add a dot Prettier ignore. Normally the node modules is something we would write here. So why not, right? Node modules, but also any build folder or dist folder uh, we want to keep this out of our checks because these codes are normally generated, right? So anytime we have generated code, it's, I would say, recommended to exclude it from the directory or from the checks as long as we know that the code generation is not, cannot be buggy and I'm not really interested in the structure of generated code, I'm interested in the structure of my source code. So the same thing I'm going to write for my ESLint ignore. I'm just going to write node modules, build, dist, and so on. And here I'm going to do a git status at my terminal. So just to see what I have actually changed, right? And another thing that I think um, Prettier is not responsible for is, of course, the package lock.json. I'm still considering whether we migrate to yarn. Maybe we could use yarn v2 now, uh, but for the moment, I think NPM is going to provide us all the um, functionality we, we need, right? So let's keep going with NPM as far as we can. If we hit a barrier, for example, if we needed to use workspaces from yarn, then maybe it would be a reason to change. But at the moment, everything is working as as we want it to, and it will for a long time with NPM. Also, because it's the default package manager, right? I mean, the standard package manager. Okay, so this I can also include in my ESLint, ignore. And now I think I'm good to go. So let me clear up my desktop, my terminal, and let me run prettier check again, right? And then, of course, I run into several problems. So how do we solve that? Well, we normally run npm run prettier fix, right? We, de we define this script here in our package.json file. As you saw, I changed the extension here to a simple dot to make sure that I check everything because I was running into a few issues with not identifying subfiles, right? So maybe the, the patterns here were not being correctly matched. If I add a dot, then this will check every file in the current directory and below, and that is not included in the prettier ignore file. Okay, but before I do that, let me just show you while I'm still in master, right? I for sure don't wanna push or, yeah, I don't wanna push things directly to master. So I want to have, I want to follow a good a good pattern here, which is to have a branch per feature that I'm developing, right? So this can be either the user story. It's going to be the user story for us because otherwise to have one branch for each individual subtask is I think overkill at the moment. But then we will branch create a branch for the user story, and then we will commit to that branch, and then we create a pull request from that branch to master, right? If your subtask is big enough to deserve its own branch, then go ahead and do it. There is no clear rule that says, oh, 
subtasks should never get their own branch. But there is a very clear rule that says you should never commit to master, right? Only when you are merging from pull requests. Okay, so that's the first thing I have to do. So I'm still in, in master. So what I'm going to do is I will check out and I normally follow a convention um, that I put the initials of my name, LM, and then a forward slash and then the story that or the identifier of the story that I'm working on. So this is UA1. And once I do that, I'm in a new branch, LM slash UA1. And here I can run then again, npm run prettier fix. And it will change a lot of our formatting. If we look at, yeah, so this changes um, a little bit here, still the same, but in my signup route for sure, right? So as you can see now it formats the, the route differently. So now I can actually test if the linting is passing. There is one error that is the preferred default export. Yeah, I thought that this would be the case. Let me just do one quick check and let me see if I can simply run ESLint. Dot. Um, I'm curious if this is going to work. Yes, it's even better. Now it's getting more, um, but I still have this problem. TypeScript, yes, lint parser, and that's because it's trying to parse some some files. For example, the .js file that is not supposed to be there, right? So um, I mean, this uh, TypeScript project and I'm trying to parse a .js file that's why it's giving me a little error I could maybe come here and allow js and set it to true right and then I think that this should pass no it's do give me an error yeah so um, maybe I talk about this a little bit in a future video if I come here to my ESLint of course this is not gonna be the case uh, it's going to be just a temporary solution so that we can commit our code and still check the whole thing. Um, and then if I come to source slash index, there is my console.log statement. Yeah, this one I'm going to leave. Okay, like this warning, it's not really an, really an error. And it's good for us to know that we are listening on port 3000, right? So unexpected console statement is an error that we normally want to avoid console.log statements, for example, from within the from within the routes that we are implemented, we don't want to have like here a, a console.log errors, right? So errors.array, right? So this, this doesn't add us, this doesn't add value to the production code. It simply adds value to the maybe debugging or the development process. So we don't want to have these kind of console.logs, but here I think this gives us a clear sign that our app was correctly initialized. So I think that <clears throat> I think that it's um, this one we can keep. And the other one that it's telling me is uh, that it prefers the export default from the routes slash index, right? So it's another rule, um, it doesn't, so it prefers default exports rather than named exports. As you can see here, I'm naming this export uh, default as signup router. And this I need to, to get rid of this error, right? So how do I, how do I get rid of this error? Um, I need to import the signup router from the slash signup and then export default signup router All right so i think that this should uh, get rid of my error oops now i have some prettier errors and the signup router was not found in dot routes so here i think that i need to ah yes something like this right 
but so here sorry uh, just a little bit this I think we are gonna change this code in a bit uh, to be honest I don't really like to have this structure but I want to um, stay as consistent as I can and like this it should pass right so I'm importing the routes from my dot routes and then I am destructuring all the routes that I that I'm using here and in the in the index file then I'm just export so I cannot directly import named import um, so I cannot I cannot automatically destructure the imports I need to do it in a second line and now uh, if I run prettier so I just want to get rid of the prettier errors okay fixes it now if I run the lint then it should pass okay now it passes right so if I now add my my code then I have a bunch of commits that I want to write package lock.json yes it should be committed it it's it should be committed, right? Many people say, oh, don't commit package uh, lock.json because there's going to give conflicts to my local uh, environment or some packages are going to be different and, and, and that's bad. It's really bad if different developers are developing the same application with different versions of apps. That's bad. So um, you should ensure that all the developers are working with the same versions of packages and this is done by the package lock.json. Right, and then once you pull this, you would run npm ci to update all the dependencies. Okay, we have it here. We still don't have a check in our commits, so in the messages, right? So far, we have followed the convention. Which convention? Let me just uh, <laughs> semantic. Um, semantic versioning versioning comedian something like that. i don't remember exactly uh, where is the name right this angular so this is not semantic um oh, i don't remember what is the name of that package angular commit messages let me just find this here Conventional commits, yes, yes. Conventional commits is what I wanted to say. So we are somehow following this structure with fix, feed, breaking change, and so on. And additional, also, I can have more scopes or more, um, that's types, right? So more types and the scopes, they tell me in which package I'm working on. We will implement this soon because when we start deploying to production, we want to make sure that our commits have as much information about our development process and our features as possible. So we will go back to this. At the moment, we don't need to worry too much about it. So um, I will just keep following the format, right? So git add, okay, it's already there. Git commit m, and it's going to be fit. So it's a feature in the authentication scope. And this is that I have implemented email validation in sign up route right very clear message it's going to run my pre-commit hook and hopefully everything is going to pass exactly and let me do one more change to my pre-commit hook now it doesn't add a lot of value apart from um, having it here but it will soon and after I run everything, I want to run the tests, of course, right? But I don't want to run the watch all tests. So I'm going to change a little bit the comments here. So my test is going to be simply just, and then I will have a test watch, right? And the test colon watch is going to watch the test. So now if I run npm run, um, test colon watch this is going to be the test to to, to so this is this is the command to rerun the tests automatically every time we change the files but now if i just run npm run test then i'll just run the tests and exit okay they pass 
and it exits. And then this command for my test is going to be executed every time I run the git commit command, right? As long as there are staged files for, for commits. So maybe we do a little change somewhere. Let's add a new line here, <laughs> just so that we have a staged file. Git add, and let's say git commit m feet. Now it's not a feet, but let's make it a core of that is add test checks in pre commit hook. Let's see if it works. Yes, it works as expected, of course. Now I cannot even commit code if my tests are failing. And that's very good, <laughs> right? I, I cannot. So this really prevents bad code from entering whatever feature branch I'm in, whatever master, whatever version of my code I'm in. I, I can ensure that up to the point that I checked out from master, up to my last commit, all the tests were passing. So if I screw something up, all I need to do is to do a git reset hard, and that's gonna erase whatever little change I did because it was in my previous commit, everything was passing. And then I'm back to the stage where everything is passing. Isn't that very nice? I mean, for me, this is quite appealing. And I think that's also one very big benefit of having our test-driven development approach. Okay, so now I have my branch, right? I have the UA1 branch. Of course, this is not ready yet, but I can already push this to my origin and that's UA1. And now it should be in my remote GitHub repository, right? If I come here to the to my remote repository and I have uh, my unsocial app here and I switch to my branch UA1 then the code should have a bunch of commits here right yeah as you can see everything is working as as expected and you can already access this code if you want to from the github repo okay this was more of a code maintenance video in the next video, we will continue with the implementation of our password validation and sanitization functionality. And we'll write the tests, we write the functionality, and we commit, and then we push the code. Okay, thank you very much, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.